Russia is taking full advantage of climate change to try and shore up its military power. Now, it's testing new weapons in the Arctic in areas where there's been quite a bit of ice melt. And what the Russians are doing there could have, in fact, major implications for the United States uh, and other Western allies. International Security Editor Nick Payton Walsh in London with the exclusive reporting now. You know, experts have been warning uh, about this for at least a decade now, and yet a lot of what they feared Russia seems to be trying to implement now. Well, certainly, and the ice is melting significantly faster than many scientists, diplomats or military experts had in fact expected. And yes, you're right, there's been a lot of talk about Russia doing things, but here they are actually implementing significant uh, military manoeuvres, heightening in the last months or so with the test and completion of tests in the months ahead of these new superweapons long advertised by the Kremlin head, Russian President Vladimir Putin, but often thought by US officials to simply be too terrifying to ever be possible but there are signs they're moving to fruition and just recently too all of this enables Russia's stronger hold on what's called the northern sea route potentially a route from Asia to Europe that's half the length almost of that of the Suez Canal remember that in trouble recently yet again another factor increasing competition for control on this new ice-free sea lane it's a new frontier expanding for all the wrong reasons with pushy neighbors rushing in. Russia is seeing the Arctic ice melt fast and filling the gap with a military buildup, some of it on Alaska's doorstep not seen since the Cold War. Key is a new generation of superweapons like the Poseidon, 120 mile an hour nuclear propelled stealth torpedo. It's designed, say Russian officials, to sneak past US coastal defenses and detonate a warhead, causing a radioactive tsunami to hit the east coast with contaminated water. Experts told CNN the weapon is, quote, very real. It'll be tested in the summer near Norway, whose intelligence head said it's not only the ecological damage that could be bad. It is in a testing phase. It's a strategic system and it's aimed at targets and has then a, an influence far beyond the region in which they, they test it currently. Some said Russian President Vladimir Putin was fantasizing when he revealed this and other new weapons like the hypersonic Sirkon missile in 2018. But continuing development and tests make them very real. Russia is projecting an image that it's developing new technologies uh, and this of course it is destabilizing the strategic balance they are now starting to develop those capabilities that could reach the united states and its nato allies that's not all russia is up to cnn has obtained satellite images revealing the persistent buildup of russian bases along its northern coastline part of what a u.s state department official called a military challenge Close to Alaska, at Providenia and Wrangell Island, are two new radar stations with, stationed in Anadir, a quick reaction alert force of bombers and jets. West in Katelny, a thin strip of land has seen, over seven years, the slow growth of a large airstrip. And in Nagurskoy, in the northernmost point, is another base that's sprung up since 2015, one of several in the Arctic, decorating the colors of the Russian flag. Nagurskoy and the nearby airfield of Rogachevo are both home to MiG-31 jets, recent arrivals. And further west at Alenya Guba on the Kola Peninsula, over the past four years, experts believe a storage facility has slowly been built up for the Poseidon torpedo. Russia has had its eye on being the Arctic power for years and is now moving to make that happen. Yes, this is its coastline for sure, but U.S. officials have expressed concerns to me that this build-up is not just about protecting, it's also about projecting power across the ice, even towards the North Pole. There are new resources to exploit under the ice, yes, but Russia released this video in January of the first time a freighter got through the ice in the east in the thick winter to sell a new trade route along its northern coast. It's a possible moneymaker for the Kremlin, cutting the current journey time from Asia to Europe through the Suez Canal nearly in half. U.S. officials voiced concern to CNN that Russia is already demanding ships use Russian crews and get permission to cross it. In response to Russia's build-up, the U.S. has sent B-1 bombers to fly out of and Marines to train in Norway. Who gets there first makes the rules, they say, 
in the rush for a place nobody should want to be conquerable. Now, we asked the Russian foreign ministry and Russian uh, experts for comment on this and received no response. But it's important to point out that Russian President Vladimir Putin, in an extensive Arctic plan published twice, has pointed out that their interests in the Arctic are purely economic and peaceful. And while you do see their significant military build-up, Russia would, of course, argue this is its coastline, so it's entitled to do exactly what it wants. But the broader issue here is that rush for military resources north is being matched by the other Arctic neighbour, the United States, and there is a fear, I think, possibly that the, the sheer pace in which this build-up is occurring with unpredictable things like that Poseidon torpedo, a terrifying notion, frankly, could lead to miscalculation, could lead to simply an escalation there, which nobody needs. And the important point to realise, frankly, is that this is a part of the world unaccessible, bleak, desolate for millennia, which is now suddenly a place where people have to calculate what they might militarily need to do or be able to do startling change ahead here which is being matched by military advances